It is the single most debated basketball topic ever. It's the biggest clutch gene. With the game on the line. And the best clutch money player. Fate of the universe on the line, or the Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. You better hit it. Come in. Primary ignition. Who is the most clutch player of all time? Clutch is a vague term, and it's difficult to measure vagueness, so let's start by defining it. Now, the populace would define clutch as a rare genetic trait, one placed at the top of the athletic skill hierarchy, a mythical force that only a select few possess. Now, the NBA would define clutch as shots made when the score is within five points or less with five minutes or less left in the game. And this is undeniably a period of time when the stakes do increase, but I don't think that's what most people think of when they hear the word clutch. Buzzer beaters, game winners, last second go ahead step backs. No story's ever been written about a layup with 450 left in the clock that won the game. For this reason, we are going to use what's called Clutch Squared. This is a win probability model that Mike Bowie has been widely recognized for. The basic concept is this. How does a player's actions, both positively and negatively, impact the win probability for his team? You might notice these swings just tracking the win probability following a game on your phone. For example, Steph knocking down a three early on might hardly alter the Warriors' win probability, but in just a few closing seconds, it can launch them from 10 to 95%, even certainty. And clutch play is really associated with these needle swinging plays, right? It's the antithesis of garbage time or early game action. To be eligible, you had to take a minimum of 100 clutch squared shots, and we ran this all the way back to 1996. So, who is it? Who is the man in the arena? The man with that rare clutch DNA strand? Fate of the universe on the line, death being pointed at Earth, give us Anthony Dave. Davis? Anthony Davis. Not Kobe, not LeBron, not MJ, not Steph, but the Brow? How? Anthony has the highest effective field goal percentage in these clutch squared moments by a wide margin. We aren't looking solely at field goal percentage. Effective field goal percentage waits for threes, and Here's Anthony three in the has win. hit several of those in big moments. Oh, it's good! What's Anthony going did. on here? The Brow is a great player. Nobody's denying that. But in general, centers have a high field goal percentage. Who has the highest of all time? DeAndre Jordan. Maybe you anticipated this. I mean, positionally, there's a clear trend. It's Anthony because Anthony is closer to the rim, but Anthony doesn't have this high of an effective field goal percentage over his career. His career average is worse than guys like Steph, LeBron, and many other shorter players on this graph. So again, what's going on here? So the further right that we go with this, the more we find guards. And there's a reason for this. Post plays take a little longer to develop. They might be hard to execute if you just have a few seconds left in the game. As dominant as Shaq was, you might not be able to just get him the ball and have him go create in the waning moments. Guards are attempting far more of these shots. In fact, if we look at the top 20 in terms of attempts, only two were post players, KG, and Dirk, six, six, and the most voluminous. Kobe's efficiency was pretty impressive when you consider his unparalleled volume. He was better than LeBron, he was better than KD, he was better than MJ, the oh. man with the ultimate green line. Get him! Kobe! Hey. Was pretty good in these late game situations. Kobe was great, but not as dangerous as Dame. Dame checked in at 48.2% effective field goal percentage. That was number one overall, minimum 200 clutch squared shots. Dame time is as advertised. 
Das Dirk emerges if we look at a minimum of 300 clutch squared shots taken, and that makes sense. Like Kobe, his game is seemingly built for these late game situations. A stork-like ability to balance on one foot and hit a fadeaway at any point. Dirk had no shortage of big moments. And what about the dude with the shoes? His airness. MJ was slightly above average. Now, obviously this was a completely different era where defenses could play more aggressive in the 90s, and effective field goal percentage was certainly lower overall than it is today. But we also only got the last few seasons of MJ because our code has trouble tracking before 96, so when we got the last few seasons, still, he was an impressive above average given his volume and percentage of those clutch squared shots that he took for his team at that point. And who was anti-clutch? Who fell at the time of pressure? Baron Davis, Tyreek Evans, Derrick Rose, Allen Iverson, Dwayne Wade, Russell Westbrook, and Donovan Mitchell were some notables. So how can we improve this measurement? I mean, we still don't have an answer for Mr. Davis here. How can we go further into the clutch? Playoffs, playoffs, turn up. Playoffs! It's about to go down. Playoffs are different than the regular season. Here's an only. Being clutch, that's synonymous with playoffs. So how do these rankings look if we control just for the playoffs, the most crucial point of the year? A biblical player. G Back out to Allen. Ray Allen has been a literal savior in clutch moments. The second coming lived up to his stage name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Shooting an absurd 68.97% in clutch playoff moments. Hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. He's closer to earth. McKee gets it in the middle for the win. It's Another time, second overall. Yeah, you can dance, Reggie. Playoff Jimmy to be as we know him, highly effective in the clutch. Mike Bibby, phenomenal. Back to Bibby, has the open shot. Yeah! LeBron, slightly above average. Lillard, above average. KD, average. Below the event horizon, though, oddly, Kobe and MJ. Sinking further into the dark side, James Harden. Uh -huh. Dwayne Wade, and I hate to say it, Westbrook. Despite having the worst effective field goal percentage in our sample, Russ might not be the biggest outlier. Checking in, the greatest shooter of all time? Time? Steph Curry? Steph carries a measly 27% effective field goal percentage in clutch squared playoff shots. And if we control a little further, Curry is a staggering 0 for 14 in go-ahead playoff shots. The man with a laser-guided freaking shooting system attached to his right shoulder has been horrendous in the playoff clutch. One shouldn't discount the significance of this. Steph has performed terribly in playoff situations, but he has four rings. That is a testament to the supporting cast in the Bay Area. This poor shooting's been addressed in the media before. Fate of the universe on the line, or the Martians have the death beam pointed at Earth. You better hit it. I want Iguadala. But there's something incredibly short-sighted here that Max is skipping over. Something that might also help explain Anthony Davis. I spoke with Seth Partnow about this, who's a former Bucks analyst and currently writes at The Athletic. Consider the following. Steph has taken 45 playoff clutch squared shots in our sample. He's made 12.5 effectively. Keep in mind a three is worth 1.5, a two is worth one here. Had he made just four more threes, he would be average among these stars and better than Kobe. Had he made seven more threes, he would be elite in these playoff clutch squared moments. While examining clutch playoff statistics is telling, 
It's not gospel, especially when we consider the playoffs being such a small sample size. Again, I'm not discounting the importance of clutch moments, but if Ray and Steph, two outliers in opposite directions, are single digit makes and misses away from being statistically identical in these moments, isn't that worth mentioning? Might this be part of the reason why Anthony is such an outlier? His clutch shooting, not just his unibrow. So it's easier to see this the more shots that a player takes. Uh, conveniently for debate, at the top in terms of volume, we have LeBron and Kobe. If we strip away the glamour and narratives of clutch moments, both are right around where a rational robot might expect them to be. LeBron is above average. Kobe is basically average. When looking at the entirety of their career for effective field goal percentage, LeBron is above average. Kobe is basically average. As attempts increase, overall accuracy on game-winning shots regresses heavily towards the mean, towards expectations. Max is an Ivy League-educated individual. Imagining an ether where he doesn't know what small sample sizes are is difficult to comprehend. Calling for Iguodala over Curry borders on science fiction. Unfortunately, there is a clear benefit in today's world to sensationalizing absolutist takes. LeBron James was not born with a clutch gene. LeBron's another example. LeBron's not going to win the championship. A period of time where fans and analysts were having a field day with his late game he play. He don't know how to win. Many oddly still do. He wants to be a movie star. But he's been a better shooter than Kobe in these playoff moments. He's also hit the most prized clutch shot more than anyone. Gets it to LeBron for three for the win. Yes! LeBron James! This is not just something that I believe. This is what has actually happened. Yet somehow LeBron is still seen as a Padawan. Kobe has been crystallized as a Jedi. And of course, being clutch doesn't mean just making clutch shots. One can have a clutch rebound, a clutch steal, a clutch block, a clutch assist, or a clutch free throw. Thankfully, Mike Bowie has devised a ranking system that accounts for all of this. This win probability added model takes into account the varying degrees of importance of different numbers in a data set. For example, Hitting a shot is more important than a rebound, but getting a rebound does affect win probability. When Giannis pulled off this spectacular block late in the fourth, the Bucks' win probability jumped by 13%. By all accounts, this was a clutch moment. So when running this more holistic clutch tracker, who do we find? If we scroll all the way into the top here, we find Chris Paul. Kind of surprising, but wait a second. That's LeBron. That's everybody else. That's insane. Uh, the, the first time I looked at this, I actually did not even see LeBron. I'm going to show a screenshot of the text from Mike. He was such an outlier, I did not even see him. He was quite literally off the chart. You can say what you want about this metric, but LeBron has been a clutch squared monster for opposing teams. Now, this is cumulative, and obviously LeBron has played more playoff games than anyone since 2005, which is as far back as our tracking data can go. So I wanted to run this for averages for a more fair comparison. Minimum 30 playoff games, clutch moments. And right at the top, we see LeBron again. Roughly speaking, this means that LeBron has improved his team's odds at winning a close playoff game by 7.8%. This was run since 2005, minimum 30 playoff games. Now, many of you might have looked at these two charts and noticed that there's someone missing. Is there anybody more clutch than that man? This just wasn't something that I anticipated. I mean, I knew that Kobe wasn't the most efficient shooter of all time, but not even cracking the top 15 for regular season and playoffs, that was surprising to me. And you might look at this in complete dismissal and think, well, those five championships speak for themselves. And your gut is telling you that all this data, all these stats, these numbers, it's just misleading. This is ridiculous. That is certainly a position you may take. Many former players have as well. I mean, for centuries, people could just accuse their neighbor of witchcraft simply because they felt a certain way about them and it worked. Wait a second. Does that mean our guts? 
can be wrong about stuff. Kobe made the most clutch shots, but he also attempted the most clutch shots by far. And maybe that's why I thought he'd rank higher, just the sheer volume, all these crazy shots he's made over the years. But there's something we can learn from this, not just about Kobe, but about these late game clutch situations in general. Average clutch squared shooting is an abysmal 41%. That is some combination of two possibilities. Better defense, worse offense. So throughout the game, the offense has three advantages. The defense doesn't know who will be taking that shot, when it will occur, and where it will happen. At the end of the game, the defense has a little bit better idea who is gonna be taking that shot, and they certainly have a better idea when it will happen. Take a look at this pivotal finals play. Orlando waits until the waning moments to send a double, and they're so convinced that Kobe will take this shot, they've abandoned three perimeter players. This is the sin of predictability. It's also partially unavoidable here. The correct play is to run the clock down since it's tied, but nothing says Kobe can't kick this out here. I should state that I am a big Kobe fan. If anything, I was hoping to find the opposite. Fans of his raw courage might howl that such criticism misses the point, but the larger takeaway here should be that over time, virtually all of these players are performing worse in clutch moments than in regular ones, even the anointed king of clutch. For any team, this is an area worth considering. You might be better served initiating a democracy rather than a dictatorship. Stars may appear to be supernatural, but if given enough volume, they're pretty much themselves. From the stands, uh, Big Clutch is magic. It's a force that we can all witness, but only a select few can experience. Daydreams on the blacktop or late at night, even just walking to the laundry room. A superlative moment between what could be and what is. But this clock MJ, one -on -one and this hero game. thought is misleading. Certain players may appear to levitate and that orange sphere may carry more than eight PSI at certain moments, but this is only due to the seemingly uneventful plays that proceed. Hey Mike. Plays that we surely take for granted. Michael, you ready to get in there? Clutch isn't some rare DNA strand reserved for a chosen few. Clutch is the appreciation of the unseen timer. That is the magic. It's a force that any of us can harness. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and take care.